Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God once again. This is Pastor Stanley again of True Revelation of Christ Mission or True Kum Church uh, in Matuga, Sindo. I still welcome you on this live. It's a good day. It's a good morning. Yeah. As we go on to study, as we go on to understand what should we be doing as we wait upon the Lord. Some people have relaxed. Other people, they feel like they have waited for the Lord for a good time. So they feel like maybe it's a lie. Christ will not come. Please, thanks for joining everyone. May God bless you. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> So this is the third part as we understand what should we be doing as we wait upon the Lord. And the title is called, we, uh, this, uh, this topic is known as the believer's daily life. This is something you should keep on doing, keep on doing, keep on doing as a believer. Though you are saved by grace, though you, you were forgiven, though you were set free, though you were given everything, you were given every blessing, you are blessed, you are a child of God, you are set free, you are not in bondage, everything about you is brand new as we've been studying in this last series. So, I just want to tell you, let's continue with the third part. As we understand, what should we keep on doing as we study? Yesterday, we saw, uh, we learned about, uh, we learned about who is a Christian. And we also knew, uh, we, we came to understand that uh, we have two types of Christians. We have um, uh, spiritual babes, Christians, but babes in Christ. And we also saw that we have mature Christians. We have baby Christians and also mature Christians. And also we saw what can we do to make sure that we grow spiritually. So we are still continuing with the third part. And the, we are going to talk about the growth, spiritual growth. That you may be a mature Christian. Please, I still ask you, share to your friends. Let your friends also come to understand. I know they've waited for the Lord. <clears throat> Some people have begun to, uh, to mock and say, ah, we have, from, from our forefathers, even in the Bible it's written, uh, many people wait until they feel like maybe it's, it, it is just a lie. This is not a lie. This is a real life. I think for you who are uh, those who accepted Christ, those who are in God's kingdom, those who are enjoying this Christian walk, I think you can, there is evidence in you. You feel something. There, you have a life that is different from the life you used to live. So, friends, just share this life. Share to your friends. Let them come to understand what, what is the will of God. The will of God, first of all, as we started, we saw that the will of God is that all people should know the truth. All people should know, uh, should be saved. And we also saw in those parts that how can they be saved? So they need a preacher. And the will of God is that you preach to others that they may accept Christ. That's not the topic today. But today we are going to see spiritual growth. Oh, my friends, thanks for joining. This is happening every morning, every morning on this page. So don't miss. Don't miss because just have your pen and your book because we are going to, uh, we're going to enjoy scriptures. This is the, uh, the food for the soul. Uh, for the spirit hallelujah hallelujah <clears throat> so as i told you uh yesterday in in part two this life is a daily life growth is a daily life just as you were born remember you were a young you were young you were just a baby some time back you were given birth to i remember the day the way you cried, can you imagine? We are just, you were handled like this. But right now, 
You are a mature Christ. You, you are a mature lady. You are a mature man right now. You have grown up. The way you grow up in this body, just, yeah, in physically, now I, I see that you have grown up. That's the same thing. God wants you to grow in this new brand, in this brand new life. As we saw yesterday, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, is a new creature, a, a creation that you have never existed. The day you accept Christ, you are a brand new person that has never existed anywhere. Though you have 30 years. I know you may have 30 years. But the day you accept Christ, you start counting one, two. I know maybe if you are seven years in salvation, it means you are seven years. Hallelujah. I think you remember we read in a book um, of Ephesians. It was chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, the, Bible, the Bible says, We are Christ's workmanship, created in Christ. This new creature, this new creation, was created in Christ. Was not born by your mom. Was not born by your dad. No, this new creature was created in Christ. I told you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are God's workmanship, created. The day you accept Christ to be your personal savior, you are created in Jesus. That's why I always tell you, there is nothing that can follow you from your past. I don't care how many emotions, I don't care how, how much alcohol you took, I don't care how, how many people you killed, I don't care how many people you abused. If you accept Christ... You become a brand new child of God that has never existed anywhere. And the Bible tells us in, um, in Ephesians, no, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, that God saved us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his son he loves. So on that very day, there was deliverance and there was transfer. I think uh, we all understand that. But today, let's continue with the uh, spiritual growth. Because yesterday we saw that this growing is a daily life. Also, we began by uh, a scripture. It's in the uh, first Peter. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Let's read there. Uh, as, as you grow on. This is, I told you, this is a daily life thing. Growing. We have to grow every day. Actually, let me tell you. This physical growing, the way you see me here. Even I don't realize that I'm growing. But this spiritual life, you can realize. Actually, you can realize because also I know I'm a, bit, a little bit tall, tall I'm tall, uh, I'm growing somehow fat, which means I can see that I'm growing. Also in this spiritual life, the, the more you eat the food of the soul, you can see, you can see the way you reason changes, the way you walk changes, the way you understand changes, the way you associate with others changes. This one is a sign to show that you are changing, you are transforming. Uh, le le please, le le let's share this live. Share to those groups on Facebook. Share to those groups on WhatsApp. On WhatsApp. Let them see. Let them, let them come to know this truth, please. Don't just sleep with the truth. I was... <clears throat> sorry. Uh, it's in Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Uh, it is verse... Uh, verse 2. Okay. 2-2. Two, two. Say, as newborn babes, I told you yesterday... Uh, the day you accept Christ, you are a new babe. Uh -huh. So here, the Bible tells you, as newborn babes, desire sincere milk of the word, not of other things, not of your past stories. You know, when I went to America, they, they, they welcomed me warmly. You know, the, the, the place where I slept, actually, the food that I ate, I can't, I can't even explain the way I relax, the way people welcomed me. 
I saw the word of God. I saw the heart of God. No, that's not the word, please. I know. I know. Yesterday, as he was sleeping, I dreamed this and that. I dreamed a summer is falling. Uh -uh. The Bible says, as newborn babes, you know, we are babies in Christ. I think, I think you know. I told you, we are children of God. When did you become a child of God? You go to, first, uh, to John chapter 1 verse 12. To all those that received him, all those who believed in his name, to them gave him power to become children of God. First John chapter 3 from verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed unto us that we should be called children of God and that's what we are. We are children of God. So, since you are a child of God, this is an everyday thing. This is a daily thing. The Bible says, as newborn babes desire sincere milk of the word of God. Well, do you know the word? I think you know the word. That's Christ himself. This Bible, the Bible is uh, a book about God's plan for salvation. It shows God's heart to mankind. This is the Bible. So the more you eat this word, that's why some time back, I remember Jesus talked to the, to the Jews as he was explaining they, they, they always wanted this food. He used to give them bread. He gave them bread and they enjoyed. Many people followed Jesus because of, because of bread. They ate bread. They ate bread. But one day, he wanted to see if they have grown to maturity. That's why you cry a Christian, you should be born again. After the next step is to grow spiritually. I told you, this is an everyday thing. And you can't grow spiritually by just stories. Huh? You can't grow spiritually by just stories of your pastor, of other believers, or just... Uh, no! There is something that can help you grow spiritually. Because this spirit feeds on the spiritual thing. And our, our spirit feeds on the word. If you want to grow spiritual, uh, spiritually, please just feed on the word. And I, 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 will, I was actually telling Thompson. One day, Jesus decided to go a little bit maturely, to maturity. He told them about the real bread. He said, I am the bread of life. When they had this, he told them, if you want life, eat me. I. Many people, the Bible says, a lot of disciples left Jesus. He only remained with only 12. That's understanding this word. Many Christians don't like the word. Many Christians they, they are feeding on something wrong. But the Bible has said, As newborn babes desire sincere milk that you may grow thereby. If you want to grow spiritually, I told you growing is an everyday thing. Growing is an everyday thing. So as we explain a Christian or believer's day life, just know one thing, you have to grow. If you don't grow, if you feed on a wrong meal or an, on a wrong food, you, you will have spiritual kwashako. Find a Christian is annoyed, is not happy, is not enjoying the, the goodness of God. The Paul says in, uh, in Philipp, Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. But because a Christian is wrongly fed, you find them annoyed gloomy. They, they worried. They are worried about the life. They are worried about their family. In every way, you find Christians, they are not free. They are not, they don't, they don't enjoy this freedom in Christ. But Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He tells you, he, you know, you can see things happening. Physically, you see your mom sick. You see, you have a problem. You don't have what to eat. But the Bible says if you want to grow, rejoice. You know, you look at them. 
but you use your spiritual eyes. Okay, we shall see that in the next part. Hallelujah. So we've seen that God wants us to grow. Yesterday, I also read for you uh, Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 32. The Bible says, Paul, as he was leaving this church, he told them, I, I commend you to God and unto the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Only the word of God can build you up, that you may grow thereby. Hallelujah. If you want to grow, just keep on feeding on the word. Not on the words, no. The word of God. Hallelujah. So let's read again um, uh, second, uh, second, second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. What does it say? So we are still looking at spiritual growth. I told you it's an everyday thing as a Christian. As you wait upon the coming of our Lord, we have to keep on grow, growing. I, was, I will tell you something. I will explain why should you grow in the next part, please. Don't miss any part. So we have to understand, why should, is it necessary for a Christian to grow? Hmm? Is it good? So don't, don't just, just wait, just wait. Huh? But let's read, um, <clears throat> I told you, Second Peter chapter 3, verse uh, 18, the Bible says, Okay, is it first Peter? It's okay, chapter 3. Verse 18, what does it say? Okay. The Bible says, But grow in grace. That word grace, if you just put, underline that word grace, it's something. Grace is Christ himself. But, okay, let me just make it simple. The Bible has said, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. They have said, the Bible has said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge. Some people, they believe in Christ whom they don't know. You believe in Christ, but you don't know who, who Christ is. So I told you every day, every day, until the day of our Lord, keep on feeding on the word. The Bible has said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know God? Do you know your Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know what he wants? Do you know the way, the walk he wants you to walk? You have to grow in the knowledge of Christ. You know, do you know why people still go on um, you, okay, they live a, a wrong life. They should not walk. Do you know why a person can live on quarreling with other friends, backbiting? Yeah? Do you know why? Because they have not grown in the knowledge of Christ. The Bible has said, <clears throat> The Bible says, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. In, uh, and, okay, let me read again. But grow in, in grace and in knowledge of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. So, you have to grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior. How can you grow? And when should you grow? Let me ask you, is, is growing a one-day thing? Growing is not a one-day thing. It's a journey every day. We have to keep on growing, growing, growing. It means uh, every day you have to know something about your Lord. But how can you know if you don't have pure preachers of the word? Because the people you want to hear from, you just want to hear people who speak, uh, who just ignite, how, what can I say? Mm. Who, 
who just put uh, how is it called you know some people they just want to say you will get a car you will get this you will get this you will get this you don't need that my friend just you know the word that day you come to know the grace of god and you increase in the knowledge of our lord my friend you will not be deceived Paul says, you will not be tossed to and fro. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry for that. Hallelujah. So, I was telling you, friends, so this growing, the Bible has said, grow in the knowledge. How can you grow? You know, you have to you have to keep on looking at yourself, look at your spiritual life, look at the way you talk, look at the way you understand, you know. You have to examine yourself. Let's read again. Okay, let's first of all read uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 from verse 2. You know, the way of growing in the knowledge of God, you you have to have a different life. You must have a different life. Different from the usual. How? Or you just, you know, some people, we are Christians, but we live the life of other people. The way the world lives, that's the same life we are living, which is wrong. Christians have a different walk. And our walking is not a one day thing. It's a daily walk. A daily walk. A daily walk. Please, thanks those who are alive. Let's continue. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. <clears throat> don't just say, I don't have what to do. You know, Christ did everything for me. So I just have to sit and sleep. No, it's not like that. We have to do something as we go on. Please don't miss any part. Every morning I'll be on this channel. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Aham. Uh -huh. Verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Let me read NIV. The Bible says, uh, Do not conform the any longer to the patterns of this world. You know, here the Bible said, Increase, uh, grow in grace. Desire sincere milk that you may grow. The Bible also said, um, uh, Grow in grace and in the knowledge. You know, many people how they have knowledge of the world but they don't have knowledge of christ they don't understand christ but they know the knowledge of christ they know how to sin they know how many demons they know about demons but they don't know who christ is exactly please don't miss i'm gonna teach different things on this platform every morning don't miss i decided to serve god I don't care. Me, I decided to grow. And after growing, I have to help. You know, Jesus told um, told Peter, he said, but and if after you have turned, please help your brothers. Remember? Okay, let's read. The Bible says, you know, we do uh, as we grow. We don't grow. Uh, we don't do as the world does. But we have another way of doing things. That's why Romans chapter, uh, chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. So, you cannot grow if you do things as the world does. As I told you, as we go on studying, we, we, shall, we will understand that we will have a different life as Christians. We have a different life, you know, as others put their expectations in the things of this world. For us, our expectations, our time, our mind is not put on things that perish. Hallelujah. As you grow on, the Bible has said, conform not to the patterns of this world, you know. As the world, as they say, let's go and abuse this sister. As you, as a Christian, you conform to them. As 
they say, let's steal this guy. You know, we are poor. You know, as you understand, Uganda, Uganda is hard. Things are hard. So let's do this and this. You don't do like that because you are a Christian. That's why the Bible says, as you live, this is an everyday thing. Do not be conformed. Do not live as the world lives. You live a different life because you are not in their kingdom. They are in the kingdom of Satan and for you, you are in the kingdom of Christ. As you know, you were transferred. I told you Colossians 1.13. You were transferred from the other kingdom, from the other power, and you were brought into a different life, a different kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible has said, and do not uh -huh, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. You know, this world has patterns, the way they do things. This world has a way they do their things. They have the way how they they have their talk, they have their dressing. This world, this world, as you dress in, in your daily life. For you have a different way of dressing as we shall, as we are, are see in next parts. So don't conform to the patterns as they dress. The way you see they dress here. One breast is outside. You have a different way of dressing. Don't conform to them as they put on short skirts in your daily life. You don't conform to them as they cheat people. You don't conform to them. That, that's, that's the way of the world. But you have a different way. Hallelujah. Hmm? But he said, but, huh? He said, but be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This transformation is an everyday thing. Every day you have to see. That you don't live as the world. For you be transformed. Be changed. I ask you. How can you be changed? As a Christian. There, there are things that as you read in our constitution. Eh? How should a Christian dress? Transform in your way of dressing. How should Christians do their business? Change according to Christian, Christianity. We have the way how we have to serve. Welcome customers. I told it as I was teaching business some time back. I told Christians, we should be actually the best business people because we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We know how to handle people, Christians. Eh? We know how not to cheat people. As people say, this is one kg, this is one kilogram, they put Three quarters. A Christian, as you give someone, let's say sugar, they will see and say, sincerely, go to that safety person because his sugar is enough. Because as you see, if you go to the other shop, their sugar, one kg, takes only one week. But if you go to that Christian, mm, you can take at least three weeks. Yeah. It means... We should be the best people in business. You have customer caring. I think you know. If you are transformed, if you are changed to live as Christ lived, please, I know. You can change this world. You can change everything around you. Eh? You know how to attract friends. If you live as Christ, you can attract as many friends as you can. You can change as many friends as you can because you have a mind of Christ. The Bible says in a... Acts chapter 10 verse 38 that Jesus went around doing good. He went around doing what? In his daily life. I said Acts chapter 8 chapter 10 verse 38 Jesus went around doing good in his daily life as I'm teaching believers daily life. The Bible says our Jesus the one we follow he went around he went about Doing good, but Christ, Christians, as you know, we follow Christ. We are going around doing bad to the extent that people say, I will not get saved because there is no difference between, between saved people and uh, witch doctors. Yeah, because witch doctors may 
they steal people's things. And Christians, we do the same. Which doctors don't forgive. And the same to us here. So we are not transformed. But the Bible has said, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I told you, we are understanding a Christian daily life or a believer's daily life. The transformation is a daily thing. But it's dangerous if they try to correct you. You refuse the transformation. You stay rigid. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Sorry for that. I, I don't know what happened. I turned off. But yeah, I thank God it's on again. Hallelujah. I was telling you. The Bible has said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our Lord Jesus. Sorry for the network today. I don't know why. Uh, it has been good, but I see it's now uh, disturbed. So, the Bible has said, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. If you want to renew your mind, you have to keep on reading the word of God. You see, as you are going into the Lord to sleep with someone, okay, someone is calling you, you are making an appointment for, for these useless things, uh, you can renew your mind. I say, mm, I'm a child of God. What does the word of God say? Fornicators, adulterers, uh, they will not see heaven. Oh, you renew your mind by this word. You know, someone may come to you and say, please, I want some help from you. Give me a loan like this. You see, you say, yeah, you know, you, you know, you have money. You say, you know, I don't have anything. Don't deceive. Have the way how to talk. You know, Christians have begun to borrow. Uh, they call it a white lie, a good lie. There is no good lie. The Bible says, let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. If you are very far, please tell someone, sorry today it rained, but, I didn't, uh, but I'm coming. At what time? Uh, tell them the truth. But Christians, they keep on lying. They call it a white lie or a good lie. There is no good lie in Christ. No. Just transform your mind and live the way Christ wants you to live hallelujah another way that can help us to grow i uh, don't miss tomorrow we still go uh, going on with this same part but tomorrow we shall see the believers work tomorrow don't miss the believers work how should we work as believers yeah i told you you're going to study every day yeah so let's read in, um second Corinthians. you know we have seen that um, the Bible has told us in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 that we should not be conformed to the patterns of this world but we, we should be changed by the renewing of our mind. This renewing of our mind should be conformed to the patterns of the kingdom of God. The way Christ wants you to live. Hallelujah. So how can we renew our mind? Let's keep on. Let's go to Second um, uh, Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen. Second Corinthians three eighteen. Let's read. Let's read. Let's read. Don't get of the word. Of, don't get tired of the word of God. Three eighteen. The Bible says. Let's see what the Bible says. This is an everyday thing. Keep on reading the word of God. Keep on growing. How can you grow by eating food? Which food? Sincere milk. That's the word of God. The Bible has told you, grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. This is, and they are showing you areas you should grow in the knowledge of Christ, in the grace. And that's all the same. Grace and the knowledge of Christ, it's all Christ. Grow in Christ. You know, I told, I told my, uh, the people I always teach, I, I told them, in Christ is a very big place. In Christ is a very big place. And in Christ, there is a way of living. So in Christ, so grow in Christ. So even here in Christ, you are expected to grow. I say that, 
Let's read verse 18. I said uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says, and we all, who? You. You, I'm saying you. And we all, this is, uh, uh, he's talking about we Christians, we believers, he says, and we all, with unveiled faces, our faces now we are, uh, a veil was taken off. We can see Christ and understand him. That's why you believe in Christ. You believed in Christ because you came to understand. A veil was taken away. I will read for you tomorrow. Uh, these people are still... The, the Bible says that God of this world has blinded their eyes that they, they may not see. But you, you were unveiled. The veil that covered your face was taken away. Now you can understand. How should you live? That's why I just, I'm just igniting you. That you may know the way you should move. Hallelujah. And we all with unveiled faces. Beholding the glory of the Lord. Are being transformed into the same image. From degree of the glory to another see we if i say but we with unveiled faces with uncovered faces you we are being transformed daily daily but you can never be transformed if you are not fed on a sincere word some people think um they are being transformed and yet they are put in prison again, you know. You can find a church, but I told you, Jesus, uh, Paul, came to a Galatian church. Galatians, if you read Galatians chapter 3, he began by very hard words. He told them, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your faces, Christ was crucified. How come that you are doing this, you know? I told you, if you don't eat sincere word, you will be bewitched. In the kingdom of God, the, um, these witch doctors cannot bewitch us. But in the kingdom of God, teachers, false teachers can bewitch you. False prophets can bewitch you. Money seekers can bewitch you. Merchandisers can bewitch you. Merchandisers, you know, merchandisers, those are Christians who sell Christ in everything. They promise you something and they tell you, do this, Christ will do this for you. Honey, those are merchandisers, businessmen in the church. If you feed on their food, you can never grow. But you grow miserable life. You will be miserable and miserable. You die hating Christ because you are feeding on the wrong food. Hallelujah. But the Bible has said, desire sincere men. He in Second uh, Corinthians three eighteen the Bible says, "But we with unveiled faces, with uncovered faces, hmm? as be beholding, we are beholding. We have the glory of God as we are now, as in the mirror. We are being transformed daily, daily, daily to the same image of Christ." You know, I told you who is a Christian. Is someone being transformed to be like Christ? We are like Christ. But the more you turn, the more you, you are changed by this world to be like Christ. Wow, that's the spiritual growth I'm talking about. So don't miss tomorrow, friends. Let's see a believer's walk tomorrow. Uh, but we've seen today, God wants us to grow. The way you grow naturally here, the same thing in this kingdom. The way you are growing in this natural life, that's the same thing since you are a child of God. Also, God expects his children to grow spiritually. You have to live the best things, the way you think, the way you see Christ. And you have to. 
lift up your understanding. The Bible has told you, grow in grace and in the knowledge. Don't just grow. <laughs> grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. The moment you come to understand the knowledge, the moment you grow in the knowledge of Christ, there are some things people do you can never do. If you grow, if you grow, how can you grow? I told you, you can only grow by understanding this word. As you read the word, the Bible says this word is a mirror. You look into it and you see yourself. Tomorrow don't miss. I will show you something. The way you should walk. Hallelujah. May God bless you. I stay Pastor Stanley from a church known as True Revelation of Christ Mission. Here in Uganda, a place called Matuga in Wakiso, Sindo. Just come, just call me by those numbers. We can direct you. If you want to study the word of God, if you want to understand who Christ is, who God is, if you want to know the truth about the God you believe in, please just contact us. We can even add you in our WhatsApp groups. We always teach the word of God that we may grow thereby. Hallelujah. Please, sir. Uh, just love your God. Since you, you are a child of God, love your God. Love your God. Grow. Because God wants you to grow. He wants people to be saved. I read for you. I always read for you. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, um, This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. So being saved alone it's not enough. Don't just relax because I'm saved. I feel like I, I'm just waiting for Christ. There is something you have to do. Grow in grace. Grow in knowledge of Christ. Don't just grow in the knowledge of TVs. How to get TV. Don't grow in the knowledge how to get a plot. Don't grow in the knowledge how to get a life partner. Don't grow in the knowledge of how can I build a house. Hey, that's not grow in the knowledge of Christ. May God bless you. Let's meet tomorrow. Share to your friends. Shalom.